What's up you guys, it's Adana. welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I said that I'm going to break down a full 24 hour shift for you guys. I'm gonna try to go hour by hour, but not necessarily hour by hour because there are some hours where it's just kind of lull, right? So I wanna make sure that you guys just get the nitty gritty of this. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So thank you guys so much for joining me today and welcome to my channel. All right, so with that being said, in a 24 hour shift, um, I told you all in my previous video about my actual time on my 24 hour shift. So if you haven't already seen that one, you can go back and look at that. But we get there early, like six o'clock in the morning. So typically um, what I'm trying to do is get there around like 5.50 ish, you know, close to six because I wanna get myself settled and changed and all that stuff because we're in our like our scrubs that the hospital provides. So although I walk in in my regular clothes, we're changing into our scrubs. So I wanna give myself enough time to get ready and get settled, like put my things in my locker, all of that stuff. Um, because at 6.30, that is when we are usually giving sign out. So what exactly is sign out? Sign out is kind of what it sounds like. I am signing out <laughs> of my shift to the next PA that's coming in. So I'm letting them know everything that happened overnight. I'm letting them know things that they may need to do throughout this day, things that they may need to follow up on, all of that good stuff. So we're doing sign out with the residents because we do have residents on like staff with us as well um, on the general surgery because we do have residents on staff, like on general surgery service with us. So we're giving them sign out as well. And they're like the ones that I said before that are kind of typically running through the patients. They're seeing them throughout the day. They're kind of managing their care until they leave at five. There are some times in some moments where the residents actually stay the whole 24 hour shift with us, where they are on call with us which will be very helpful because, you know, they're there to help and we're there to help them. So um, it's a, gonna be a benefit, but in the moments where they're gone at five, then it's on you. So after 6.30 and giving out the sign out, then we'll typically go and do a pre-round uh, just to kind of see the patients, um, especially with the residents because they didn't see the patients overnight. And so for me, although I just saw the patients at like five o'clock, 4.30, 4.45ish in the morning, if I'm coming off of my 24 hour shift, um, I'm gonna go see them again well, I'm not gonna go see them again if I'm coming off. But if I am coming on, since I didn't see the patients the night before, I would go with the residents and round with them and see the patients. There they'll get kind of an idea of what has been happening with this patient, like what exactly you know is going on with them overnight. If there are labs already available, they would look at that. We would see what the labs are saying for the patients and we will know like, okay, well, this is what we need to do. This might be something we need to talk to the attending about. Um, and make note of for them, you know, for us to mention that, hey, this is what's going on. So we'll see them around like, we'll probably finish sign out maybe like 6.45, 7 o'clock. We'll go and we'll round and we'll see the patients. Um, might finish rounding on all of the patients around like 7.30ish. And then from that, we have like table rounds. So, so this is where we are with the other trauma PAs who are solely like on trauma. And then the attendings, which are like general surgeons slash trauma surgeons. So we'll be talking about all of the patients on both services, um, just kind of getting an idea of like what's going on with them, things that they may want us to do, um, you know, orders that they may want us to run. Again, like this is just like a repetition of care almost, you know, like in continuity of care, we're going from like us by ourselves to now the attendings. And then um, we'll typically finish that maybe around like 8.15 ish. After that, we will go either to breakfast um, and get our free breakfast that the hospital provides for us, which is a blessing. Um, so we'll either do that or um, we will go straight to kind of round with the attending. Um, so if we are doing a rounding with the attending, that may happen around, like I would say around 8.30ish, um, 8.30, 9 o'clock, it depends on what they're doing. And so we will go and we'll round with the attending 
and we will see all of our patients. So when we're doing that, again, it's the same thing that we just did at 7.30 in the morning. We're going through, we're going room to room, seeing the patients, um, looking at any lines that they may have in. So like if they have IVs in, that may need to be taken out because we're advancing their diet to like full liquids or like a regular diet, you know, we'll have those lines taken out. If they have any central lines that need to be taken out because you don't want central lines in for too long because they are a very high source of infection. And so, you know, typically you're like trying to have them in the least amount of time as possible. So we'll take those lines out. We'll be feeling on their bellies, making sure that it's soft and not tight and distended. Um, so those are all the things that we're going through and we're looking at, um, you know, talking to the patients and seeing like, hey, what's going on with them? Do they have any concerns? Now, one thing that I've learned like through this thus far is that a lot of this medicine thing, like it's not like mainly medicine. Like a lot of times when you're dealing with the patients, it's really about like kind of management, like management of the patients and their emotions, their feelings on the situation because the medicine is like pretty like just kind of matter of factly almost. But a lot of times it's a matter of like getting that connection with the patient and making sure that they have that trust in you because if they lose trust or faith in you, like that is it, you know, like they're not going to be compliant and you want them to be compliant with their care throughout their hospital stay and then afterwards. So that is something that I have been learning, like how to talk to patients, how to try to like get them on your side. So they're actually like kind of following your directions. Um, but after we're done with that, you know, it, it might be around like 9.15 ish, um, 9.30 ish, depending on how many patients we have. So after we're finished with that, then like we're off on our own, you know, we're off to write the notes that we have to write on, you know, the patients, like what plans we have for them, what our assessment was. Um, if we have to discharge patients, we have to, you know, write that discharge summary or that note and, you know, get everything set up in place for the patient to leave the hospital. So we'll be doing that. But I mean, if we didn't have time to have breakfast at like 8 30 or so, um, then we'll go down and get breakfast because the cafeteria closes, I believe it's at 10. So um, we'll go have breakfast and then we'll come back and write notes. So from around like 10 to 11, 12, like we're, we're working, right? We're writing notes. We may have to go back up and see the patients or put something in their chart. Um, we may get a call like, hey, an NG tube is not working or we want to go put an NG tube to suction, um, back to suction from gravity or vice versa to kind of see how uh, the contents of that patient's stomach or abdomen is like draining. Um, because again, like I said, the, the trauma slash general surgery people, like a lot of it is like the things that they're doing is in the abdomen. A lot of their surgeries are like in this abdominal area. And so we want to make sure like our patients aren't, aren't distended and things like that. So we'll be doing a lot of that, like running around, going up and down the stairs. Um, and we'll do that until around like, you know, 11 30, 12 o'clock and when it's time to go to lunch. Um, so we'll have lunch and depending on if traumas are called or not, um, trauma PAs have to go to the traumas. So the residents only go to level one traumas. And as a trauma three, I am not really trying to go. I want to go to level one traumas, but I think I'm not going to really go to level one traumas during the day just because there's just so many people. Like when I've gone to the level one traumas, you have the two trauma PAs, you have like the three residents and the attendings and you know, everybody else, anesthesia, respiratory, ICU. And so there's a lot of bodies, a lot of moving pieces in that small little trauma base. So just to kind of like alleviate some of that extra bodies, um, I, uh, will respond to level two traumas to see if my colleagues need help. Um, and then obviously again, when the residents are gone, I will attend and, you know, try to see if they need help with the level one traumas as well. But when you're having lunch, like you have no idea, like if you're going to have an uninterrupted lunch or not, because again, traumas can be called and then you have to leave. Um, but apart from that, like lunch goes pretty smoothly and then you're back on, 
you know, in the room, in your call room, like writing notes if you haven't finished all of your notes, seeing patients, um, you know, taking consults. So you'll get consults from like the hospitalist or internal medicine. Um, you might get calls from like the ICU on a patient that you may have in the ICU, like uh, maybe something is bleeding or um, maybe there might be like a wound or like the opening from surgery that a patient may have had that looks a little bit purulent and, you know, infected. And so they're just kind of calling you to inform you on that, but also kind of just ask your opinion on what that you want them to do. So again, like it's pretty like nerve wracking, a little scary, but I mean, this is what you signed up for, right? You signed up to direct these patients' care and like make these decisions. And so um, that is like typically what you're going through throughout the day. The residents will leave, like I said, at five um, and they will give sign out to you. So like we typically run the list like maybe three to four times during the day um, because we will go again at like around 3.30-ish, three o'clock to run the list with the attendings to see, hey, all right, so what was done today? Um, were these directives like followed through? And are there anything, is there anything that I need, you know, to know about as the attending to see, hey, like I need to watch out for this tonight or um, is the patient doing fine? And so we'll go through the list and say like this patient was discharged or, you know, this patient um, went to the ICU or this patient has to had to go back to surgery, whatever the case may be. We will address that on our second table rounds, which is typically at 3 or 3.30. Um, and then that is it. Uh, the, at that point in time, you really shouldn't have any notes to write or anything like that. And you're just kind of reading, waiting around, waiting for, um, you know, a new consult to come in or a call to come in that, you know, on a patient that you may have. So, uh, like I said, the residents leave at five unless they are on call. And so they will give sign out to you. They'll let you know, like the patients that may need a post-op check, like if they went to the operating room with a the patient, um, then you may have to do like a night of surgery check on this patient, uh, typically within the first three hours, I believe it is. Um, you want to go see that patient, make sure they're doing okay, make sure like their flu, you know, their fluids are where they need to be. They're not dehydrated, all of that good stuff. Um, and you'll replenish anything, uh, electrolytes, fluids, blood, whatever it may be low, you replenish that. Um, and you try to make sure that the patient is well taken care of on um, a pain scale. Like, so you prescribe whatever pain med meds you think, you and the attendant think is appropriate um, so that that patient is doing well throughout the night. After around five o'clock, five, six o'clock, like that's kind of it. It's kind of downtime. I know that there are people that like try to take like a little really quick nap. Like for me, the first day that I was there, like I didn't take a nap. I was just kind of like, again, reading up on things that I didn't really know about. Chart checking my patients like crazy, making sure that no one was, you know, like getting tachycardic or um, tachypnic, meaning like their heart rate was um, racing or their respiratory rate was increasing. I just wanted to make sure that they were okay. Um, I told you that I do a check at eight, so I did go and see my patients again at eight. But these are things that like, it all depends on the person, right? You know, there are people that may not check on their patients until 10 um, and then that's it uh, for the night and you will check on them again in the morning or go down there when they're called. But for me, since I'm so new, I wanted to make sure like, okay, is there anything that I need to do? Can I help the nurse out with anything? Um, so I went and I would check on my patients at eight. Uh, and then I got in the bed after that, like around nine o'clock, I got in the bed and was just kind of like, just chilling, um, reading, looking up, like how to do various different procedures on YouTube um, and just kind of learning, taking that time to learn. Of course, I talk to like my family throughout the day um, and just try to check in on them and make sure that they were okay. Now, the cafeteria does not open for dinner. So if you did not get like something a little extra during the lunch period, then you really don't have anything to like eat at night unless you bring something from home. And so that is something that you have to be aware of like for me, but um, that is really, 
not that the cafeteria doesn't open at dinner, but more so like not having things to eat later at night um, is something that you have to worry about now because there is like another like kind of sub pizza shop in the hospital, but it's closed currently because of COVID. So once like things start to open back up, then obviously like it's going to be a lot better, um, you know, because people we're gonna have that available to us if we need it. But currently that's not the case. And so um, that is just something that you have to be mindful of, you know, like how are you going to eat? Like I typically try not to eat after eight anyways. So for me, like I'm not that hungry throughout the evening time. And then by that time, you're like just trying to wind down and go to bed. So it doesn't even really matter. Um, but for somebody that needs to eat constantly, that would be something that you have to be mindful of. Um, after around nine o'clock and you're just kind of chilling, it's really just like a waiting game. You're waiting for consults, you're waiting for calls. Um, you really don't have much to do throughout the night. Uh, you just have to make sure that you update the master list. I explained this list to you guys where, you know, it's very imperative that the list is um, updated because as the new PA coming on, you may not have been seeing these patients for days. And so the list will kind of direct you on who the patient is, what they originally came in for how long they've been there um, and then kind of to-do list like tasks that we have to do and follow up on with these patients so that is definitely something that um, I always try to make sure that is up to date um, and then also like all of our patients typically will get morning labs so you want to make sure that they all have morning labs ordered so that when you know five o'clock five o'clock comes around in the morning the lab can draw these labs and you know we get to see exactly like how our patients are trending so i'll make sure and do that and then like around midnight i will go and do like a last minute check on these patients just to see how they're doing and then i go to bed um, that's when i'm like actually like trying to go to bed and like trying to get rest and sleep um, now obviously typically like i have no control over what happens i have no control over like who calls or who doesn't call or what's going on with what patient but ultimately like i feel like that is like a good model to follow for myself at this moment in time now if i'm in bed and i get a call then i have to go see the patient and so i got several calls um, when i was doing my first 24 but like i was saying um, some of them were just like oh i could kind of address it over the phone um, others i did have like two of them i had to go check on the patient just to make sure they were doing well um, and because i wanted to see them like there's nothing like seeing the patient and so the patient was doing fine um clinically like like physically speaking like i could see like they were doing fine um but like medically like you know there was a lot of drainage and stuff so i wanted to make sure that i took care of that and so i you know cleaned the wound and did all of that and then went back to bed and try to get some more rest and i think i may have gotten like four hours or so like two hours here one and a half hours there that kind of thing um and then it was time to wake up and see the patients again for the third time make sure that there was nothing going on overnight you check their charts um, and this is typically around like 4 35 o'clock i'll go they're usually getting labs drawn so i wanted to i want to do it at a time where they're already awake i'm not trying to like awaken them up out of sleep because I know what it's like being a patient in a hospital and then people are like constantly coming in and out to like give you meds or whatever the case may be I'm like I'm not here for that I'm not trying to have that right you're cranky you're upset and so to kind of just be as make this patient as least upset as possible I wanted to go I try to go through to a time that they already have to be up and awake so I'll do that and then um, after that I'll go back to the call room after I've seen all of my patients. This may be around like 5.45ish, 5.30ish. I'll make sure that the list is updated from any new things that I've seen. I'll make sure that if there are any labs drawn because again you want to make sure that your patients are trending in the right direction. So you want to make sure like white blood cells are trending down which is an indication of they're not like you know having any type of infection if it was trending up then you're like okay they're probably getting an infection they might be fibril again a sign of an infection and that's ne not necessarily what you want so with that being said i'm always looking at 
the chart, just trying to make sure that the patients are doing well and then preparing myself for sign out. So like I said, sign out will happen at 630. Uh, the new PAs might, that may be coming on or the residents that may be coming on that may not have been on call the night before will typically start trickling in around like 615 ish. Um, we'll do sign out at 630 and then that is it. My 24 hours is done. I get to change my clothes, a clock out and go home. Now, um, obviously if you live far away, cause there are some of the PAs that live like 45 minutes to an hour away, they might like stay a little bit longer get a little nap before they leave. Um, they would obviously clock out before they take their nap, but they'll clock out, take their nap, and then wake up. And um, there is an option to take a shower at the hospital. I don't know how I feel about that yet. And so I haven't like, that's not necessarily like something that I've taken advantage of yet, but there is, there's like a shower outside of the call room that you can use and I know like several people that use that. Um, for me, I don't live that far away. So I decided that I will just take a shower when I get home. And so, um, I go home, take a shower and then go to sleep. Um, so far I've been sleeping for like a good four, anywhere from four to six hours, uh, after I come off the 24, I think it's all dependent or after I come off the night shift, because I've done a night shift before where I slept for like four hours. When I came off this 24, I slept for like six hours just because I was up like several, like so many times throughout the night. Um, so I didn't really get good rest, but I think probably on average it will be four to six hours that I will sleep and then wake up and you know, go about the rest of my day. But that is typically how the 24 hour shift works. Um, obviously you are not working 24 hours back to back. There's just no way possible that you would be able to do that because you'll be extremely tired. So you will be missing things. There will be things that you will miss, um, on your next 24, if you were doing it back to back. So with us, you're only working six shifts a month at minimum. You can work more obviously, but you at minimum, we're only obligated to work six shifts a month. Um, and that kind of just works out to be three shifts a pay period. So you'll work like two shifts one week and then one shift the other week. So if you're looking at that, just, you know, by numbers wise, in terms of days, you're working obviously three out of 14 days. So there right now, my schedule is where I might work one day. I might work a Monday and then I don't come back again until Thursday. Um, and if I work on Thursday and then I get off on the Friday morning, I don't come back again until Tuesday, or it might be my weekend to work. And if it's my weekend to work, then I'll come back on Sunday and then I might be off that whole week. So it's actually like a pretty sweet shift. I like, I love it. Um, at the moment, obviously I, I like having time with my family. I like being able to kind of just get a break from hospital life, which is nice. Um, because you see a lot of crazy things, you see a lot of hard stuff. So it's nice to be able to like decompress. Um, but right now, like I'm loving these shifts. And so that is typically how the 24 hour shift runs. Um, you are on call the full 24 hours. You do get to eat. Yes, you do get to sleep and take naps, um, but it's all dependent on like how busy you are and like how many patients you have to see. But I will keep you guys posted on this, of course, on how I do on these upcoming 24 hour shifts. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. You know, I'm, I'll be sure to answer anything that I may not have an answered in this video. Um, so leave me a comment on that. And if you have any video ideas, leave those as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.